Hey, yo, socialites, welcome back to the Social Studies Podcast and to the year 2024. How the hell are you? I'm Joe Dombrowski. I'm Gaspar and Dazzo. Mm, I'm just going to say this. I'm touring all over the country. Do I even have to? I have to go through all the cities. Probably should do that. It's probably good in nature. It's a um, new. Co- it's a new year. It's a new year. The end of this month, I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. Top of February, Portland, Vancouver, Seattle. Uh, doing a little quick ditty in Los Angeles. Keep that open too. Then it's Milwaukee, Appleton, San Francisco, Fort Wayne, Providence, Rhode Island, uh, Baltimore, Spokane, Vegas, Dania Beach, Florida, Washington D.C., Calgary. Rochester, Pittsburgh, Denver, then off because I'm getting married in June. Six months. Holy shit. Like legit six, like exactly six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty much exactly six months. Uh, I will be in Rochester, then I will be in Manhattan, but I think that show's almost sold out. So if it's not, get your tickets. Bridgeport, Connecticut for a few shows. Phoenix, Arizona, San Diego, Poughkeepsie, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and Chicago, Illinois. But most importantly, not today, if you're watching on Monday, but if you're watching on Wednesday, this is today. Uh, on January 10th, the show I was on on Netflix comes out, The Trust. You can check it out on Netflix. The first four episodes are out, and uh, you could see how I wore a t-shirt on TV with everybody else wearing nice clothes. Yesterday, Morgan and I are sitting down watching, just like unwinding for the day, and we're going through Netflix, like what to watch. And I scrolled on like upcoming, and you were the second thing. And it was just this picture of you and Morgan and I were both like, <laughs> oh my God. It, it really, like, we knew it, and it still caught us off guard. We were like, holy shit. But Did when you sent, send that to you, yeah, a bunch yeah. of people have sent me it, or like people, um, like pictures of their TVs, pictures of the TV or pictures of like, hey, this was just on this trailer. And like, there you are. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's true. Uh, that's that is weird. Crazy. Um, also, crazy. like when the picture you sent me, though, I look like my 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 jaw is made out of clay. Have people and, sent you other pictures? Well, people sent me pictures of the, the trailer playing, like just watch your trailer. Oh. So like there's no like official screen. But like what's crazy is like now anytime I like. I, I obviously I'm Googling the show because like they told us soon, like they'll release the cast, you know, and all the information mm. about that. So I'm just like constantly refreshing. Like, when is that going to come out? And because remember, we're recording this January 2nd, guys. So yeah. where it's right now, they haven't like released the cast to the public. But like every time I refresh it, there's like new news about it. Like E! Weekly, this sh- channel, Netflix guide, the, you know, guide for TV. I'm like, whoa. And it's weird because it's go to film that little thing. Uh, the 15th, 16th, 17th. So the show will already be out. Mm hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So. I thought, well, but maybe they'll do a little like Gasper profile on you, but it'll be like footage from the show. You'll see. I'll tell you after Ooh, we film. He know, he know. Okay, you guys. Also, <laughs> just so you know, we will be doing, um, Behind the scenes interviews of the show, me interview. I'll watch it. Then I'm going to interview Gasper and ask him all of this and all of that. Those will be on Patreon. So you can get, you can subscribe and support the podcast at patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. Also big news. We love the, did you know Thursday episodes? You guys asked for more episodes in 2024. We gave that to you. That 2023 move for 2023, 2024. Did you know episodes will still be a thing? They will be on Patreon. If you love the Did You Know episodes, if you still want more of the Social Studies podcast, head over to Patreon for more episodes of that. Behind the scene interviews of Gasper on the Netflix show, The Trust, and uh, some other behind the scenes perks along the way. Go over there, patreon.com slash the social studies. The live Zoom, hangout, giveaways, discounts on merchandise, and all that other stuff. But yeah, guys, we love doing the Did You Knows, but unfortunately... Um, we just, both of our schedules have really like kind of picked up and we just had to move things around a little and we're going to put them on Patreon for right now. So thank you for everybody who is Patreon to have that exclusive clue. So go over there. (laughs) But yeah, thank you guys for everyone who has supported the Patreon, all the members. Thank you for everyone who's bought merchandise from Patreon. We are going to eventually figure out a way to (laughs) release it to everybody. But we're just not. Thank you for everybody who won prizes. And we did a little holiday giveaway on Patreon, you guys. And one of our Patreon fans won a full charcuterie board. How about that? Yeah. We were going to originally give away a toaster. But 
<laughs> we didn't Tyler, have one. What's going on with you? I haven't talked to you in like a week, and you get on the podcast, you're just like, eh. I am so, I am so burnt out right now, but not in a bad way, but like just, you know, so I had Christmas break. So I, we, didn't, yeah, we didn't even talk. So we had Christmas. How are you? Literally, yeah. l- the last time so, I talked to you. Um, you so on Christmas Eve, you know, I, I cover your ears if you're watching, if you're listening to this in a car with children. Um, on Christmas Eve, the elves came and had to build all the stuff and we're up very late building everything so that the children don't come downstairs to just boxes of things. So oh, the elves, the one elf who almost flatlined or who did flatline giving birth and the other elf was going to be on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, that's the team. That's the duo. They, um, it. so it was just like, at, literally it was like Christmas Eve, then Christmas morning, my kids wake up at like six in the morning. It was hysterical. Lucy comes in the room and she goes, okay, we got to go open the presents. We got to open the presents. I said, Luce, we can't open the presents yet. We got to wait till your brother wakes up. Brother, wake up. He comes shot out of a cannon. And then it was just like literally just like six straight days of chaos. Because it was like Christmas Day. Then That's we went to my mom's. We, well, we did the whole Christmas thing. Then we went to my mom's. My whole family was there. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, everybody, my whole family was in. So everybody was just basically in my house or in my mm-hmm. mom's house. Um, I went to Tampa. So I flew down to Tampa. And Joe, so I flew to Tampa. I got yeah. there late at night. Let me tell you the first thing that someone said to me. Oh, God. I get out of the car. Now, do you know what Tampa is famous for? Uh, I don't know, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say fentanyl. <laughs> well, possibly part of it. But Tampa is very famous and well known for their strip clubs. Apparently, really, they I have like, Atlanta was. I didn't know yes, Tampa. Tampa has supposedly like the most strip clubs, like per capita, or like per size, or something. So I get out of the car, and this my Uber driver picks me up, and he's this Latvian guy, and we start talking. Latvian? And within like three minutes of me being in the car, he turns to me and he goes, "The best hookers for you," and he gives me some street. So I was like, "Just drive me to the Mac." Just driving to the hotel. Like, I, do I look like I want your hookers? So he's like, so then when I was talking to the club, when I was at the club the next night, they were telling me somebody there was like, I was telling them the story and they're like, yeah, well, you're a, a single, you know, not, you know what I mean? Like by yourself guy flying in middle of the night. I got there. They're like, that's why people come here. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, whoa. What? And he, he said that the Uber driver, which I've heard things like this, they get a kickback. So, like, if they take somebody to a spot, they get a kickback for basically introducing them to the spot. So that sounds like horrifying. That yeah, sounds horrifying. So, that sounds like they're going to drop you off to a spot for your organs to go on the black market. No, because they're looking to make money and everyone's just looking to make money. You know, I get that. So but like also, like, even if I wanted a hooker, I didn't even have a vehicle. So, like, you just drop me off and then I'm going to Uber home later. I got to call an Uber back to that spot. You wait. <laughs> Give me 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's too much. Um, they, uh, and then in the morning, so I wake up in the morning and I'm like, so I go down at 530. I get my, you know, I'm up. I go get my breakfast, whatever, six o'clock. So I was like, what's there to do around here? There was a Hindu temple came up, right? Tampa's largest Hindu temple. I'm super interested in that stuff. So I go, okay. Oh, it's only two miles. I could walk there because I had nothing going on. Joe, Tampa has no sidewalks. So I straight up walked the highway all oh the way God. to a Hindu Why'd temple. Call I didn't want to Uber because the Uber was $22. And I felt like I'm going to Uber there, get out, walk around, and then get back in an Uber and pay $50 to just experience this Hindu temple that I wasn't really sure what I was getting into. So I said, I have all the time in the world. So I walked, I felt like true Florida, man. I was walking in the middle of the highway. I wasn't even on the side. I was in the middle. There was the grass in the middle. I looked like I was on straight meth and I just walked down the highway. Finally got there. I get to the temple. There's this big thing. It's an Indian cultural center. I thought that was like where I could learn about Indian culture. So I walked in Turns out it was a catering hall. So they were like, get out. I was like, no problem. So I go, there's the Hindu temple. I'm not trying to, whatever, create any uh, misinterpret, like stereotypes. I just, I didn't personally fit in based on 
my yeah, appearance. Everybody was Indian. Yeah. Everyone was Indian. Everyone was Hindu. <laughs> I was none of the above. But I was right. going there out of respect. I wasn't going there to mock it. I was going fully, there to- Fully, fully, fully. So yeah. I get you're, there. If anyone's listening to the podcast, they know you're like Mr. Culture. Yeah. And so, history and museums. So I and get there studies. and I'm like, oh my God, I got to take off my shoes. No problem. Take off my oh. shoes. I'm the only one. I got my Nike uptowns. Everybody else has slipper sandals. I go up the ele- I go up this little elevator. I get up there and literally it's like the DJ was spinning music and everything just stopped. And I'm like, hey, then I realized it'd be the equivalent of someone like who's Hindu walking into a church in the middle of like a church ceremony and just walking around being like, oh, cool. The DJ was spinning? No, there was no DJ. But you know, like when the music stops. Oh, but there was really no music. No, there was no music. But like, that's how it felt. Everybody just stopped and looked at me because they're like, we're all trying to pray and like have our service. And I was like, oh, cool. Nice statues. Like I was just touching everything. I was up there and then I was like, oh, God, because then I was already in the moment. So I just folded my hands in prayer and I just put my head down and just walked. I didn't know where to go. So I was just looping the temple. Then there was like the Ganesh, which is their... You know, the big elephant part. It's one of their gods. Yes. So there was like this altar with the Ganesh with all candy leading up to it. And people were all praying. And I just like got caught in the middle of it. So I just stood there. And Why I was the candy? like, did you ever figure that out? I didn't ask any questions because nobody wanted me there. Oh, I would have been so curious. No, no. They were all praying. It would have been weird to ask questions. So I just left instantly. And then I walked back to my hotel mm. and. And then I did the show and it was great. And then I had two shows in Long Island the next two nights. They were both sold out. A lot of fun. Really cool. Fun. Good time. And uh, and then I went to my sister's for New Year's Eve with 22 people. All stayed at my sister's. And then I woke up. It was New Year's Day. And then I came to work. And now it's the first day back at work. And it's just been literally just 11 straight days of things. You know, Mm, I know literally the holidays were insane, too. We it was just like nonstop drinking, unfortunately, because like every day up until New Year, we were like finding ourselves in another situation. I say it like that, but it's (laughs) I don't know how this drink got in my hand. What the hell? No, no, no. So like it was like, uh, first of all, we it was it was the show. I mean, well, first of all, it was we went down a. North Carolina. We're in North Carolina. I, I forgot Christmas. that this drinking, that was this out. break. Yeah, we're like North Carolina. I'm drinking. I'm hanging out, and then like we, and then we. I went and did the Tempe shows. Same. I did chill out and find some really awesome places to eat there. Good, clean, healthy, fantastic. No tacos. Also, by the way, d- no tacos, guess I I think I'm taco tainted for the rest of my life. Every time someone brings up, hey, let's get Mexican. Hey, let's get tacos. I'm like, uh, still recovering. Still recovering. <laughs> Food, food board illness wiped your boy out. But I did find some really awesome places to clean eat. There was this like bowl place. You know, I like to eat healthy on the road. Um, anyway, speaking of, if you guys want to start eating healthy too, it's a great idea. If you want to like eat better, but you're not planning to, you want to figure out how, because you usually fail at your New Year's resolutions or whatever it is. Listen, luckily Green Chef makes eating well super easily. They're the number one meal kit for clean eating. They send you fresh, delicious ingredients and recipes right to your doorstep every single week. So meal planning is a total breeze. Looking to stop up, stock up on functional snacks and clean beverages to support your gut and your brain health? Well, their new green bundles are curated selections of unique hand-picked goods that support your overall wellness goals. Choose over Choose from over two dozen options, including grab-and-go breakfast, brunch kits, 10-minute lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, and veggies. Listen, Gasper and I both got shitloads of boxes of Green Chef sent to our house. Our fridges were full from top to bottom. We ate all this stuff, Gasper. Delicious. Am I right? I I enjoyed everything I made. And even on the things that I wasn't crazy about, like the ingredients, I combined them with other things like, you know, because not everything's for everybody. Like, you know, certain foods aren't for everybody. Pick and choose. Leave an ingredient out if you don't like it. 
whatever it is. Morgan loved it too. And he's skeptical about this stuff and he he loved it. So listen, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, keto, calorie counting, or just looking in ways to up your protein intake, Green Chef makes it easy to turn those resolutions into reality. Go to greenchef.com slash 60 social studies and use the code 60 social studies to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60 zero social studies and use the promo code six zero social studies for 60 percent off plus 20 percent off your next two months we love green chef and so are you but gasper as i'm in tempe i'm like slowly dying over here come back we had a this was the best we're getting tight with our neighbors okay and if anyone I has saw seen my show video yeah 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 and if anyone has been to my show lately you know i have this whole bit about our neighbors we are younger than our neighbors by 30 years is the smallest gap and let me tell you what love them they're the best they're drinking they're hanging out we go over there the wine is a flowing because yeah, the older drinks people are a going party. the food whoa we're not going to use language like old people to describe I said my older new people know how to party. You literally over here just told me to go over and sign them up to go to the nursing home. I'm not older. It. Anyone Listen. who's over 34 is older than us. You cannot talk about my friends like that, but I will give you a little insight about them. They are over here legitimately making friends with the birds. They feed the birds and they crows i don't know if you know crows are basically just big american parrots and if you get close with the crows in your neighborhood they'll bring you gifts legit like bottle caps shiny things cool looking rocks they'll then they'll like leave it at your doorstep and stuff two really? of my neighbors over here are friggin feeding the feeding the crows every morning Cro like don't <laughs> like sir yeah it's great it's great what do they, they bring like, them no, um i think they're still waiting on their gifts Oh. I love it. I'm over here like, I'm going to feed the crows. I'm a crow feeder too. I'm fitting in in this neighborhood and that's what's up. So we did a neighborhood drinking. It was four sets of neighbors. We did a, a little bar crawl with them. Every house had a different signature cocktail and appetizer. Oh, that's cool. It, it was very cool. It that's like stuff cool. like you see in movies. Like that doesn't exist in real life. It exists in my world. Like, I never even heard of that. Like, that's cute. I, I want to be part of that. But my neighbors don't talk to You know what their to goal is? They want to they be in the show. They're like, are we in the show? I'm like, yes. They're like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Did they see you perform? <laughs> They're coming to my show at the Moore Theater in Seattle, Washington, on Saturday, December, or February 10th. Did I get that right? I did oh these are tickets at mr t times 3.com anyway love the neighbors that's what we've been up to so However, wait so i do need you a make? full blown blood transfusion and a liver transplant but whatever what did you make as your drink and food we did pulled pork sliders mm. and mint juleps we went for a little southern thing did uh what did other people do are the first neighbor who we had it at did surf and turf so she had sushi. these weren't like appetizers these were like full fucking meals no they were appetizers it was a sushi plate and then steak skewers steak bite skewers awesome then it was uh no then it was the next neighbor and they did uh so first of all you know morgan and i's fishing trip from a last summer the huge salmon fishing excursion that we went in in british columbia the neighbors across the street, we gave them a bunch of salmon a while back. So their appetizer was they had little buckwheat pancakes with some cream cheese, and they smoked the salmon that we gave them and did little salmon, uh, salmon slices on top of that. That was their appetizer with a cranberry cocktail. Then it was us. Then the next neighbors are damn. Was it memorable? S some sort of, no, there's some sort of, I want to say Norwegian, but don't quote me. There's some sort of like, we don't Norway, even know what Norwegian Sweden. is. I do. It's Norway. 
Yeah, but wasn't it the Netherlands? What was the one that, oh no, we were the There's, ones that, <laughs> yeah, we Dutch. didn't know what the Netherlands were. <laughs> right. Well, let me tell you what. There's some sort of Nordic. I'm gonna figure it out because I live in the Nordic, like Netherlands area Region. of. I've told you this. Yeah. Of, yeah. of Washington, we have like the biggest Nordic Fifth of May parade in the world. Blah blah blah. Anyway, so they did this awesome drink called. I bet you can figure it out if we start googling this. Okay. Okay. This drink called Glug, which is hot mulled wine with a bunch of nuts and berries in it. It was so good. But then they're, they were the last house, so they did dessert. And they did this fucking incredible, I guess it's a cake, but it was stacked rings that got smaller and smaller that came up into a cone and i think it was 18 rings and you start eating it from the bottom ring so they would take the bat bottom ring off crack it distribute it and it's typically served at weddings and how many rings are left at the top is how many babies you're gonna have and it was good so i was eating that dipping in the glug it was a delicious delicious Sounds so good should i look it up I have to figure out where they're from. I mean, that's so specific. I can't imagine that not coming up as a thing. You know what I mean? Oh, Ring. found it. It's called Kranza Cake. Kranza Cock. <laughs> Kranza it is. Cock? It is. They said that. I'm pretty sure they called it Kranza Cock. It's Norwegian. I was right. It's Kranza from Cock. Norway? And let me tell you what. They have a little Norwegian store up here. A little Scandinavian store, if you will, over so by it's us. Like that. I'm go to it, and I'm a buy me a Kransakak. It's great. It's so I didn't good. realize like you guys were that. Cake. Um, you know, Nor Nordic. We are Nordic yeah. now. Literally, the new theme of my house is the set of Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna name my kids Elsa and whatever the Anna. other one, Fräulein Maria. Who knows? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and what was the what was the pumpkin? No, not the pumpkin. The snowman. <laughs> Orloff. Name? Olaf. You Olaf. Do you know when we first bought What's our house? What's a reindeer's name? Sven. Really? Sven. And what's the prince's name? Hanslick. You're good. You're good. Look at you. Wait, you but like, that might not be the. Here, just one day away from Mickey ears. Why don't you go ahead and call Michael Sugarman? He'll take you on a trip. No, I won't call him because um, um, I don't care. I only know that because I like Frozen. Frozen's a great movie. Got it. The best kids movie is Moana. Well, I never finished it, but I'm so curious how it ends. I have never seen Hoana. Hoana. <laughs> but somehow I know that the chicken's name is Hey Hey. The chicken one time. I tell you the story. This girl. Oh, they had chickens too. One of our neighbors had chickens and they told us all about it. And I said, Morgan, see, we can have chickens. And they were like, yeah, you can. And I was like, mm -hmm. and then the husband was up. like, don't get chickens to Morgan. They, um, one time this girl in class, this was this year, we were like going back and forth arguing. She looked at me, she goes, you're just mad because you look like the chicken from Moana. <laughs> Oh, fuck. They got you good, huh? And I was like, uh, that's the best you got on me? I like the chicken from Moana? Like, I do, yeah. but... Um, How are your students right now? Are they freaking out? Oh, I mean, it's been funny. Like, a lot of kids today were like, oh, Mr. Dezzo, eight more days. And I'm like, to what, your birthday? And they're like, you know. And But, like, my co-teachers, the people I teach with, are egging it on so hard. You know, they'll be like, oh, Randazzo. Are you doing anything on the 10th? Or, uh, you know, what's going on with you? With, uh, you know, are anyone watch Netflix here? Like, they just say things like that just to get the kids going. And oh. the kids, like, eat it up. Like, they all keep pulling up the trailer on their phone. Like, I'm like in class and stuff? Oh, yeah. Like, I just hear the music playing from the trailer. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Is um, that what scares the shit out of me? Is that they're going to just have infinite clips of me on their phones? Yeah, I don't know. It would freak me out, man. It would freak me out. Did you, uh, we're finally in New York about to get snow. Wait, really? Is this, okay, also. We haven't had snow in 700 this, days. Yeah, dude. Is this the uh, warmest winter you've ever experienced? Oh, it's, a, it's been amazing. And yeah, I know too. 
people are going to say, oh, the climate change, yeah, that part. Okay, fine. That's not amazing. But like, as far as just from a weather standpoint, it's been really nice. Like I haven't really? even worn my heavy jacket. I wore it once and uh, it we're supposed to get snow. It's the, it'll be the first time in 700 days that New York has snow. Really? Like that's wild. Like we always get 700. snow. 700. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's Damn, the first wild. snow uh, in nearly 700 days. It's supposed to arrive Saturday night and stay until Monday morning. Potentially wow. the first to bring more than an inch of snow to the region. That's it. Just more than an inch is the most snow we've had in 700 days. Nothing. It's not. I wonder if we're going to do, uh, if it snows, I wonder if we are going to go remote. What do you think? They're saying like mm. for one inch of snow. <laughs> well, I guess like if it's a two day snowstorm. <laughs> why? Why was that funny? Because <laughs> like, you're right. It's one little inch and we're going to stay home. Right. There, it's like, like, do you remember being a kid? You'd wake up and there's snow up to your areolas and everyone's like, go to work. Like, this did not... you guys used to where you grew up? Did people shovel for money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All like right. Kids. No, I didn't know if that was like a New York thing. No, like neighbor kids and stuff. Yeah. 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 For sure. You guys too. Oh yeah. I remember we used yeah, to shovel. We, yeah. We'd do lawns too. No, you just do a path. Twenty dollars a path. That was twenty dollars. It's just that strip in front of your house. That's it. You don't even do the steps leading up to their house. The, the path. Scoop. You get the steps to your door, the door, your steps, and then the sidewalk. But it's just a no path. No driveway. Like, no, I, no, that's not a thing. I mean, the driveway's extra. Do you know one time, you know whose driveway I did? And he paid me like the most money I ever made as a kid? Jake the Snake. Who's remember that? the wrestler? No. You don't remember the wrestler, Jake the Snake? I'm going to say this, Gasper. Jake the Snake looks like someone that you shouldn't allow your child to go knock on their door to ask if they need their <laughs> uh, their their shovel plowed. Or their plow shovel? Their side? Their, Sorry. their driveway plowed. Dude, well, he's doing you, the plow. I got to tell you something. All right. Right now. But are you looking you at Jake? The podcast yet? What? Did I talk to you about my cameo experience? Did we talk about that in private or did we talk about that for real, for real? I don't know what you're talking about. But wait, yeah, did you look did. at old Jake the Snake or current day Jake the Snake? I'm just going to say this. If what I looked at of Jake the Snake when he was still wrestling is not current, then current Jake the Snake is probably on life support in a nursing home. All right. Well, just so you know, the snake that Jake the Snake has at Passed one away. point was my dad's. So remember the boa constrict, the, the Burmese the Bernie's python we had or whatever? Mm -hmm. The Bernese python we had when Jake the Snake started wrestling, Jake the Snake was wrestling in church ba basements in Brooklyn. That was like a thing. You would like. <laughs> you literally live on a different planet. I swear to God. Like it was like wrestling a in church basements. You know what happened in the church basements where I'm from? AA meetings, and that's about it. Meanwhile, right. you go to Gaspers. They have they're wrestling a donkey down there. No, like, no, no, no. It was like it was like bucks. a community center, and and he would wrestle down there, and they would set it up at the basement, St. Dominic's Church or whatever. They would they would wrestle, and when Jake the Snake was coming up. Or something with Jake the Snake and my dad. They were friendly. And my dad had that big snake. And Jake used it for something at one point. And then Jake the Snake got became huge wrestler. And then he got his own Bernese Python. And then I shoveled his driveway years later. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's your cameo story? No, it's not. It has literally nothing to do with this. My cameo story, I got to tell you, I kind of, I definitely feel like an ass Julio about this and you live, you learn, right? We're lifetime learners, right, Gaff? Sure. I want to hear the story before I agree to it. So I'm starting in OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have a funny story about cameo for you. Yeah, tell me so right now. So I'm on cameo and um, so I'm on cameo and I get a message, right? And it's like, Hey, it's for this girl, Marion. Can you please do the Megan Trainer dance from TikTok? 
and please put your kids in the video and like, you know, like blow a kiss and say, I love you, Mary. And I'm like, nah, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like that was a big ask. Would did you say? Yeah. For five times my regular. No, no. So I was just like, it. it was just weird. I was like, I don't like that. They asked me to put my kids in the video. I felt like that was a weird question. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how was it worded? Literally, it was like, hey, well, let me tell you the story. So it was like, so it was basically like, hey, can you please like wish Marion a happy birthday from Megan, you know, do a Megan Trainer TikTok dance. Please include your kids in the video and like say I love you. And I was like, I'm not saying I love you because like that'll be misconstrued. Like, you know, they could cut that and it looks like I'm like, hey, Marion, I love you. So that's why Cameo. Do I do it? Yes. Am I on it? Yes. Is it scary? No, it's not. It's horrifying. I think about this all the time. And when cameos are loose, I'll do it. Literally, this is what I want you to say. My best friend Becky is getting married tomorrow. Wish her well. Or my friend is a 30-year kindergarten teacher and she's retiring. End it. But when you go on and you're on Cameo and you're like, grab your left ass cheek while brushing your teeth and tell me, make sure you say the word hemorrhoids twice. I'm like, there's some fuckery about and I'm not having it. Yeah, and like also Cameo. Did you know that people also I am in this new phase of life where I'm constantly paranoid about cyber security and security in general. I called Morgan yesterday and I go, I know we have the ring doorbells. I want cameras around. I want to be able to see every inch around this entire house, which we can now, by the way. And then on Cameo, people will be like, tell us what your birthday is. And then they'll make another and be like, tell us what your mom's made in it. Or tell us what the first pet you had was. Tell us about the time your first car experience these are all security questions that they're asking you. Why? They want you, you to just this... get on and tell you about your first car? Well, you get on and you're like, hey, my first my first car ever was an old yeah, I get you saying. Model T. And then that's the security question as you're trying to log into your bank account. What was the first car you ever had? A yeah, Model T. I remember, first of yeah. all, who's ever first car was a Model T isn't using the internet. We can say that. But the other thing that scares me is a friend of mine who is a big comedian who I'm not going to say had their full on Facebook hacked because they were logging into an interview and in the interview, they couldn't see who was there and they were like, oh, we need um access for you to be able to like post and like to collaborate so like go in your facebook and change these settings and change this this and this so we can collaborate did it or do he did it and he's like okay good to go let's record Boop. meeting ends seconds later locked out of his facebook and they were changing everything on his page what were they all changing? of his story was like his whole story was like girls with Big asses in these thongs, like shaking their ass. But it was like, swipe up for more, swipe up for more. They clearly were like trying to use like ultimate clickbait to get people to swipe up on this to then probably hack. Huh. But That's yeah, it was crazy. And did he get it back? Yes. Oh. But um, like, it was not fast enough. I'll tell you that. Well, yeah, because, well, how about it's like when you get those Bitcoin scams and it's nonstop. You know what I'm talking about? When people's Instagrams right. are like, um, when when uh, you see on people's Instagrams, it's like, hey, ask me about how I made all this money using Bitcoin. You know what I'm talking about? Did you ever see that? And it's like, they they take your like home screen, like they screenshot it and they're like, look, I just made $638. And it's just like relentless. Click on, and then like, you click and then they start sending you tech. You know, they start messaging you. That shit scares the hell out of me. You know, it scares so me, the hell out of me too. AI, period. That well, wait, we'll talk about AI in a second, but let me tell you what happened. So I'm like, this is fucking weird. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the cameo, but I'm not going to do any of that. So Good I was like, you. hey, Marion, uh, happy birthday. I'm not doing some weird Megan Trainer 
TikTok dance because I don't dance and my kids are sleeping. But I want to say have a great birthday, blah, 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 right? 20 minutes past, 30 minutes past. My cousin Marianne calls me. She's dying laughing. Her boyfriend got it for her as a joke. I guess I didn't realize like that was my, I didn't associate my cousin Marianne's birthday with this stranger on the internet named Mary. You know what I mean? So she was dying laughing and she's like, you just fucking sent me this. We're watching it. We're dying. I was like, I fucking hate you. So on New Year's, my cousin opens it up and she's showing the whole family how I sent a cameo. Because like, you know, it's fun for that person. It's awkward as hell to watch with your whole family mocking you. And so then- all my cousins, everyone's like, oh, fucking sending me cameo request. They're like, oh, this is so funny. If you don't do it, we're going to give you a bad review. <laughs> so Have I'm like, you um, ever received a cameo? Like mm-hmm. if someone ever bought one for you? I did. Who wh- Who was it? Um, so I bought uh, one for Melissa. I bought her Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance. Amazing. How much did that cost? It was when he first got big in the with the show and it was, it was like, like 50 bucks or whatever. at the height of 90 day fiance it was like 35 bucks 40 bucks yeah. uh, and i also got her darcy from you know darcy and stacy from uh i know of them yeah i How got her that darcy. cost that was like 20 bucks some it, of them are like 500 bucks well i was looking at like because just you know out of curiosity i was looking at some like netflix reality people and oh, I was just like, out of curiosity, I was like, wow, these people do a are, little market research. These fucking people Sounds are like, charging. They what are they are, charging? Some of them are charging like 75 bucks, 100 bucks. You like if, be. They, if there's shows like out and current, they're charging a lot. Like some of the Squid Game people were charging like 25, 30 bucks. You've and I'm like, got to be shitting. And me. I was like, and was it Squid Game people who like you were like, oh, you were on Squid Game or was it like the people? Uh, well, all right, so like the old lady and her son. They're on there. They're like 50 bucks each. No, no, that one I could get. I That's can still get. a lot. $50. Like, you know. But then you got to split it with your mom, which would be 100 So you would each get 50 Well, no, no. They're $50 each. They're individually. Oh. Like, there was, they were on. people want them together. I don't know. Um, like, the Squid Games people, like, the guy Phil, 40 bucks. Okay. Then uh, Trey, the son, was 40 bucks the guy dash 25 remember the redhead guy dash please 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 like he's 25 Um, i mean i love it yeah get your coin i i get it but like you you were on like three episodes and like i think collectively probably like maybe less than 10 minutes of screen time like let's yeah um sam the guy with the big beard yeah 30 bucks so, but like this girl, like it's I've not never, what it used to be. I never even saw her. She's claiming she was on Squid Game. Yes, yeah, she said she was number one sixty six. What's her name? Louisa Warwick. Gasper, too far. People, it, it's too far. Like you know, like this guy. Like I never saw this guy in my life. Never once in my whole life. And he's charging twenty bucks. And people are asking for it. Yeah, he's got nine reviews. So, like, what are those people? Unbelievable. Like, what are they even saying? Like, hey, you probably don't remember me. I was on very, very short. But, but I don't blame them. Like, get your coin while you can, because let's be real. In five months, or come January tenth, you're not going to be able to get people booking your shit anymore. The next best thing came out. Of course, then it's over, right? Because if I look up whatever reality show came before them. Right. I right. wonder if those people are even on it. I wonder, I wonder. But see, here's the thing, though. You always have, like, the breakout star, which, I mean, I don't know, but I'm going to put well-earned money on that it's you. I guess Like, I'm... I know, Gasper, I got to tell you, I've been looking at these assholes who are on the show with you, and I say that as a term in, of endearment if they're listening. Yeah, because one does listen, and he I loves gotta, I got to tell you this. None of these bitches got shit on you. I'm literally looking at all of these people on the show and I'm like, my boy is gonna fucking destroy these hoes. Like, I just know that you are going to be on the show and the internet is just gonna be like, Gasper, 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 Gasper. Like, that's, that's 
But it's, it's all gonna matter. be game over. Listen, there's a lot of really cool and good like people on the show who like say a lot of, you know, yeah, who like you know you don't know you don't know how it's gonna be. Yeah, good. Listen, listen. I think they're good people. I, I I don't know them yet. I I think everyone has a nice presence about them, but I know you. Yeah, like, but you are. But gonna, think about when it. the world sees you. But They're think about gonna, all- like you're gonna be, you're gonna go, you're gonna be, <coughs> you're gonna be fucking like a positive Tom Sandoval. Like you're gonna be that fucking reality TV. I don't know who that is. Jesus Christ, Tom the fans Sandoval. Just, the fans just swerved over on the side of the road because they couldn't believe. Have you? What is he from? Heard of Vanderpump Rules? I've heard of it. Actually, Were you alive last summer? Did you hear Sam, about the breakup? Sam, like, Jesus Christ. Sam Salem and I, <laughs> my wife made me made me drive to the Vanderpump Rules house or something. In Do LA, they own yeah. a house or a no, restaurant? Yeah, pump. I had to go to the restaurant for her and take a video and the video is just me and Sam Salem outside Vanderpump's <laughs> house. And I'm like, yeah, we're outside the Vanderpump restaurant. Why do you keep saying house? <laughs> I don't know. The Vander house. Doesn't it Vander the- house rules? The show is all about these people who work at this restaurant. Yeah. Or was. Patricia Vanderpump or something. Yeah. Patricia Vanderpump. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know who's on the cameo? The below deck guy. The Captain Seabock. That makes sense. He's expensive. He's like 200 bucks. I got to tell you, Captain (laughs) Seabock. Captain Phillips. Uh, Lee? Lee, Lee, Lee. Captain Lee. (laughs) Let me tell you what, Lee is my fucking boy. I love that guy. I love him. He's such a hard ass. He's like Captain Sandy. Oh, Captain Sandy, even you're not getting away with shit on that boat. She'll call you in the office and be like, it's done for you. Jump off and swim home. Why? Like I love it because they're like hot. 20 somethings who are fucking around half the time and she's like i am running a yacht what are you doing i saw one no episode nonsense. of this captain deck or whatever and he captain deck <laughs> the captain's... it's called captain deck the captain's <laughs> deck <laughs> the captain's big deck and he um they the people wanted a bubble machine and he's like look he's like we can't just get a bubble machine like it we're on the water. It's super windy. Like, we're not going to be able to get it up. And then, like, the crew's like, whatever they want, we have to give them. Like, you got to get it up. And, like, they're all arguing about it. So they put this, like, lackluster bubble machine, like, on the third deck. And it's literally just, like, like yeah, like, just, like, the bubbles are just falling onto the ground. And it's, like, this 60-year-old oil rig guy who, like, owns an oil, you know, oil He's got like a 22 year old girlfriend with him on the yeah. yacht. And then like the, he let the girlfriend bring a friend mm-hmm. and the girlfriend's friend was also pretty hot. And he's like trying to make out with both of them as the bubbles are just like on the floor around them. And it was just depressing. I was like, yeah, this guy's like kind of living the dream. But then it's like, but is it, is that mm. the dream? Like, I'll say this. There was a one. Uh, first of all, I love the show because when the guests ask for something, they like have to go get it and then get it better than what they even thought they were going to get. Right. The worst episode to watch was the gays. There was this. I don't know how many seasons ago it was, but it was this pack of gays, a gaggle, if you will, technical term. And is it they were horrible just what, like bitches. mean to them and they were so passive aggressive to the staff like one went back into the kitchen because like the food there's something wrong with the food i can't remember it was like taking too long or something like that went back into the kitchen it was like oh no no, i'm just gonna help he's like i'm just gonna help you i'm gonna help you i'm gonna like, get this done it's like sit your fucking ass down like ugh, i couldn't do it go back and did and they watch. tell him to get out um no they kind of just sort of were like letting him bend him over backwards. It was, but they still that got sounds their like chair, you're in a gaggle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, happy new year to everybody. Tune in to the trust on Netflix. 
<laughs> on Wednesday. And Become a you- Patreon fan at the Social Studies Podcast. Wait, patreon.com slash the social studies podcast because you know we're going to have that behind the scenes good, good about the trust. And uh, we'll bring on some people from the trust maybe on there and some other fun mm. stuff. So I like uh, where your head's at. Yeah. So, well, it's not Captain oh. Lee's ass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, love you guys. Get your tickets at mrdtimes3.com. I'm coming all over the country. So I hope to see you there. And gasbrindazzo.com. Thanks, guys. Bye. Yeah. Mm.